Namaste everyone, we are first going to do the warm up before our asana praxis. Please remember to always do the warm up which will focus on the particular body parts that you are going to focus on in your asana practice. But it is also important to do the warm up to lubricate your joints and to prepare your soft tissue for the strain that they will do. So first we're going, going to listen to our breathing, which will be the diaphragmatic breath and through the nose. And then we're slowly going to start moving our head with the breath, the breath is going to direct the movement. With the inhale, we're going to move up and with the exhale, down. We're going to add the shoulders. Still doing the diaphragmatic breathing, so just gently moving even the arms towards the sky with the inhale and down with the exhale. Try to prolong your exhale. If you're new, you don't have to just try to focus on your breath to be balanced. So the same duration for the inhale as for the exhale. And you're not straining your muscles, you're not trying to stretch hard at this point, you're just trying to get this connection between the movement and the flow of the breath. This will help us mentally focus for the practice that's ahead of us. After we get the connection between the movement and the breath, we're going to take three deep yogic breaths with the same movement. But the yogic breath is deep and expansive and you can see that the chest is expanding and lifting. The rib cage is opening with the inhale and with the exhale we push the, breath, the, the air out on the same path. You can do this yogic breath as well. Every morning when you wake up in front of the open window, get some fresh air into your lungs. As much as you need to. After we have established ourselves in the balanced breathing, we're going to do some simple fascia stretch. This will prepare our soft tissue as well for the movements. So with the exhale, we're going to bend forward and with the inhale, we're going to bend back. But this is not the real back bend. This is just bending in the chest, closing our shoulders. And then with the exhale, we're going to bend to the left side with the inhale towards the sky and with the exhale towards the right side and inhale towards the sky. Here you will feel the connection between the shoulders and the hips. We're going to stretch your side. 
This is a movement that you rarely do during the day. So do it as much as possible until it gave, gets too difficult to sustain. All right, the next one is going to be with the exhale turning to the sides and with the inhale coming back to the front, the palms are upwards towards the ceiling and the arms are in the same level as the shoulders, preferably straight. You're not twisting or turning your hips, you're just twisting your upper back. This might also be a little bit strenuous on the shoulders and the arms, but with the regular practice you're going to start feeling more, more and more comfortable. So exhale on the side, inhale to the front. And then we're going to do gentle movements of the neck. Just go up to the point that is comfortable for you. I'm showing that you're still doing the belly breathing or the diaphragmatic breath. So with the inhale, you move up with the exhale towards the chest. So only my belly moves, with the inhale it goes out and with the exhale the belly button goes towards the spine, inhale chin up, exhale chin down, inhale belly up, exhale belly in. This is something you can do if you don't have any neck problems, if you don't have any issues with the cervical spine. It's, it's a gentle half circle in the front. We don't normally want to do the, the full circles. This can cause some, some damage or irritation of the nerves in the neck. So with the inhale, we're going to go to the side. With the exhale, we're going to drop the head down. Inhale, lift your arm up. And with the exhale, hug your head. Do not press your head. Look towards the ceiling and turn your hand your palm of your hand to the front. Stay here for five to six breaths. When you inhale, you're going to switch the palm to the, to the other ear and you're going to press the head with the exhale. And you're going to switch with the inhale, relax the, the arm on the head, turn your palm and look up. And stay here, still doing the belly breath, still connecting to the air that comes in and out of your nostrils. All right, with the inhale, we're going to lift up, change the position of the hand, exhale, push your head in the center, inhale, and exhale, hands on the shoulders, connect the elbows, inhale, open elbows and the chest and the shoulders, exhale, close and connect the elbows. Inhale, up, back, open, exhale, front, connect and close. Do this for at least five, six times, sometimes even more, depending on how you feel. This is going to activate your shoulder blades. It's going to stretch your pecs as well. And it's going to feel, you're going to feel lighter 
I'm a little bit taller after this one. And try to keep your head up, chin a little bit raised. And then you're going to change the direction. The same flow of the breath with the same movement. So with the inhale, we're going to open and go to the back. And with the exhale, we're going to close and connect the elbows. Still keeping the chin up. Okay. We're going to do some wrist and hands and arm stretches, lower arm, the, the, the flexors. Huh? These are usually painful in the right arm if you're a right-handed person. So with the inhale, we're going to open and with the exhale, we're going to close. See that I'm moving the wrists as well, not just opening and closing the fist. As I'm opening the fist, the fingers are spread wide and then I'm moving my arms towards the sides. So slowly, let's switch it up. So just turn your wrists and the hands towards the sky and you're going to move towards the sky. With each inhale, you're going to open and expand each exhale. Really clench that fist. Feel it's going to hurt at this point a little bit. You can slow it down. It doesn't have to be this fast. But try to do this for about one minute. And what, what I like to do after this is shake. Shake not just the hand, but the whole arm, shoulder, and upper back. Really throw that so that it feels much lighter. After this, we're going to move to the to the warm-up of the elbows. So with the inhale, we're going to turn them upwards. With the exhale, downwards. Doesn't have to be this fast. Uh -huh. All right, and now the chest. So I'm just moving the chest up and in, and up and in, up with the inhale, in with the exhale. This is not, I'm not taking the yogic breaths, I'm still doing the belly breathing. And now we're going to make circles. each side at least six times so when i'm inside i'm gonna be exhaling when i go moving upwards and outwards i'm gonna be inhaling okay All right, so this is going to be the replacement of the cat-cow uh, exercise or position, whatever you want to call it. Just because I, I decided I wanted to do something standing up, these days we are, I think, sitting down too much. So it's good to do uh, as many things as possible in the standing position. What you're going to do, you're going to relax your... Uh, hands on the knees and with each exhale you're gonna you're gonna look down and each inhale you're gonna look up and work with the whole spine all right after this you can do the the hips which would be the logical progression but 
I chose to do the feet first. So exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. You're still following the breath. This might be a little bit too fast. Let's see how I'm actually touching the ground with my heel on the inhale. And I'm just sort of touching the ground with my toes. The ankle rotation, you can choose to follow with the breath or not, depending on how much time you have. It's important to actually do the rotation for six times to activate the synovial fluid that's going to lubricate your joints. The ankles are quite sensitive as well as the knees. All right, so this one might be a little bit dangerous for those who have ankle issues, but this is how I like to activate my ankles as well, because they are quite flexible. And if I just rotate them, they don't get that warm up that I need. Okay, and then the shaking. Ah, yes, the knees. The knees are very important. Try to give them a lot of care every day as much as you want, as, as you need, as they need, and as much time as you have. Find the time to take care of your knees. I'm just rotating my knees here. And then, of course, rubbing them because there are so many nerves and, and ligaments and tendons here around the knee in the whole knee structure. But sometimes even when you do a lot of rotation, you can't really, you can't really warm up all of them. So it's, it's also a good idea to actually just rub the knees. So you see, I'm just doing simple knee rotation. At the same time, a little bit of balance pre-practice. Okay, and now the hips, there you go. Inhale back, exhale front, and then we're gonna do the rotation. Oh, five to six times each direction should be fine, depending on how your hips are at this point and depending on which which kind of practice you are doing sometimes it's good to actually do an intensive hip warm-up depending on your practice okay so this is the decompression of the spine this one is for the upper back I do have the issues with lower and upper back, so I like doing this as well before my practice. This one is the general one for after you get up from the chair. I'm going to do a little bit of a stretch of the front side of, the, of your body. All right. Keep your spine straight. And then gently release, grab your elbows and let your head, arms and the whole torso just fall downwards towards the sky. You can bend your knees here. This is not a stretch. This is just to relax and decompress the spine as much as possible, as well as the sacrum and to allow the back to extend itself. Look up first before you come up all together, just to get back some of the blood towards your head. You're still breathing with the belly breath, three to four 
breaths and then go up with the inhale. Oh. 